Hey guys, welcome to another video here on Skyring. I hope you all have been doing well. For this video, we are going to be talking about two of our favourite television shows that have recently ended. The supernatural western horror comedy action series Why Not Up and the post-apocalyptic sci-fi drama series The Hundred. For those of you who have watched both shows, you probably already know that one show handled its ending in a near-perfect way, while the other pretty much crashed and burned in a complete disaster. And for those of you who have never heard or watched either show, fret not, because this video will hopefully catch you up to speed and give you all the information you need to know. We are going to examine the endings for both shows and explain why we believe one show had a spectacular ending while the other did not. Do however note that if you plan on watching both shows, and we highly recommend you do because we absolutely love them to bits, then you might want to pause this video and come back after you're done watching them. There are spoilers ahead, you have been warned. To preface the rest of this video, we first need to talk about a trend that has become extremely popular in movies and television shows, especially in recent years, and that is the idea of subverting expectations. Basically, filmmakers nowadays like to subvert audience expectations by making stories go in directions that the audience doesn't expect. Now, don't get me wrong. Subverting expectations is something that has been popular in Hollywood cinema for centuries, and it has been done really well. Some notably good examples of this would be like when Darth Vader revealed that he was Luke's father in Empire Strikes Back. Or when Hauser reveals to Quaid that they are one and the same person in Total Recall. You are not you. You are me. No shit. In both instances, the audience likely did not expect those big plot twists. And those subversions of audience expectations actually served to build the story in effective and positive ways. However, the problem with subverting audience expectations in recent history is that filmmakers nowadays tend to think of it as a replacement for good storytelling and are putting plot twists in their stories that make no sense and serve no purpose to build on what has already been established in the narratives that they are telling. Some examples of these bad subversions of audience expectations would be like when Luke Skywalker, the hero and face of Star Wars, was turned into a pessimistic hermit with little to no redeeming qualities for no good reason and without a satisfying payoff. Or when the entire ending of Game of Thrones basically destroyed the show beyond recognition and wasted a decade of goodwill that fans had built towards it turning a billion dollar franchise into an unmarketable and unappealing disaster that has resulted in multiple cancelled projects since then. Now that we have explained the problem with modern Hollywood's idea of subverting expectations, allow us to tell you how that factors into the endings of both Winona Up and The Hundred. You see, one show had an ending that was totally predictable fan service like the end of a classic fairy tale, and the other had an ending that many fans didn't see coming and definitely subverted most expectations. However, guess which ending was both objectively and critically better than the other? The one that gave us everything we didn't want, or the one that gave us everything we could have asked for? Well, no prizes for guessing right. Why Not Up clearly had a better and much more satisfying ending from a storytelling point of view. You see, you can't spend years building up characters and their story arcs only for it to veer off into a path of awful, nonsensical narrative choices that make the show nearly unrecognisable to fans. In The Hundred, the show goes off the rails in the last season, and not in a good way, but in worse ways than we could have possibly expected. Bellamy, a main character of the show that fans have grown to love and adore over seven seasons, is killed off for no good reason in the narrative, and his death does absolutely nothing to push the show forward. His death is completely meaningless because Clark kills him in order to stop him from passing Maddie's notebook to the shepherd. But then she just leaves after that and the book is picked up and passed to the shepherd anyway. So then what reason was there to kill him if the reason for his death is literally undone 10 seconds later? Then, when we reach the end of the show, the whole of humanity transcends and goes to a heaven of some sort. Well, everybody except the main characters. You see, our main characters pretty much had the worst endings you could imagine. Destined to be the last one stuck on a post-apocalyptic earth without the ability to ever reproduce, 
while everybody else gets to transcend and enjoy vacation in paradise for the rest of eternity. And then, the show's creators decided to bring back Lexa, the most popular character in the series who was killed off many seasons ago. And don't get me started about how ridiculous her death was either. But anyway, they brought her back in some seemingly half-hearted attempt to satisfy long-time fans of the series. But guess what? We don't even get to see the actual, real Lexa. Instead, it's just an alien taking the form of Lexa. Seriously? I mean, it was nice to see Alicia Dabnum carry again. But come on, couldn't you have found some way to bring her back for real? Like, couldn't you find some way to get Clark to take the flame or some reproduced version of it and be able to see Lexa in her head again? Instead, we get a fake Lexa that nobody asked for and the main characters get abandoned and screwed over by the aliens for the rest of their lives. That was certainly an ending that subverted our expectations. And it was absolutely awful. At one point, this show was the highest rated airing sci-fi show on television. And by the end, the show was just an empty shell of what it once was. We love the show so much, and we still do. But we really wish that it had gotten the ending it deserved. But okay, with that out of the way, let's now talk about a show we love that gave the fans exactly the kind of ending that they wanted. Winona Up. This show had an ending that was so perfectly happy and optimistic, and guess what? Fans absolutely freaking love it. You see, there were no expectations subverted here. Every main character that we've been following since the show began in season 1 pretty much got the best ending they could have had. And you know, now that we think about it, some could argue that everything turned out so perfectly well that it subverted our expectations because we didn't even expect it. Wei Hot got their fairy tale wedding, and Doc and Winona drove off into the sunset in a classic happily ever after fashion. Our two favorite couples got the best possible outcome they could have had, and it was ultimate fan service at the highest level. It was the perfect send off for the show in its final season, and it did not disappoint at all. Everything that the show was building up towards since its inception got tied up nice and neatly, and it was just simple and beautiful, even if predictable. Now, when we look at how the endings for The 100 and Winona Up were handled, what conclusion can we draw from the way fans reacted to them? I think it shows that fans don't simply want their expectations subverted, they want their expectations exceeded. Now, you can still put plenty of twists and turns in your story that your audience won't see coming. But at the same time, you must remember the importance of telling a good story. There is no point making a story go in unpredictable ways if it doesn't serve to build on the existing narrative that has been long established over multiple installments in the franchise. Fans don't want to follow a show that they have loved for 7 seasons only for the ending to provide no payoff for all the character arcs and narrative threads that were presented in the many preceding seasons. It doesn't matter if the ending is completely predictable, because fans will still love it if it is well written and well deserved. And at the end of the day, giving fans what they want while making sure to tell a good story that fulfills or even surpasses their expectations is what franchise creators should always strive for. And with that being said, we've reached the end of this video guys. We truly hope you enjoyed it. And of course, we don't expect everybody to agree with us. I'm sure there are some fans of The 100 who absolutely love the ending. And fans of Winona Up who found the ending cheesy and not as satisfying as we thought. At the end of the day, we are all entitled to our own opinions and there certainly aren't any right or wrong ones. If you would like to talk to us about what we have said in this video, or if you have any feedback, we would love to hear what you have to say. So do leave a comment below or you can also join our Discord channel linked in the description. Feel free to share your love for Winona Up or The 100 too if you would like. And please be kind to one another. We look forward to seeing you around and we shall now return to our pirate ship in the sky. We will leave you with this cover of one of our favorite songs that was featured in Winona Up. 
I had tons of fun making it, and I hope you enjoy it. Tacos are tasty. May we meet again with Storm and Fury. There's never been a single day with you that I would give away, even when we're at our worst. Every up and every down made us who we are now. Wouldn't trade it for the world. Can't see the future or oh, where it might turn. The only thing I know. Is when you're afraid and you've lost all hope, I'll lead the way. I will walk you home. It's all gonna be alright from now till the end of time. I'll take your hand. Just wanna see you safely land. Life isn't easy, and it won't ever be. But you aren't facing it alone. Can't see the future or where it might turn. The only thing I know. Take your hand